Hello and Happy New Year. Welcome to Cards by Kendra. It's time for a new quarterly card making challenge, Kendra's Card Challenge number nine. If you're not familiar with my quarterly card challenges, it's where you can create a bunch of cards using just six sheets of six inch by six inch pattern paper with no scraps. For this challenge, you can create 15 standard American A2 size cards. This challenge is like a one sheet wonder times six. Plus, you can have a chance to win lots of crafty goodies by sharing your creations throughout the quarter. This challenge runs from January 1st to March 31st of 2023. And for this quarter, there are 17 company prize sponsors with over $800 worth of prizes that will be given away throughout the duration of this challenge. I'll share details on the prizes and how to enter the challenge here in just a bit. To sum up the challenge, you would use the cutting templates and card sketches that are provided in the free PDF printable that is available for download on my website. I will have all the details linked below in the description box. You'll want to pick out six coordinating pattern papers and assign them to each of the color coded papers A through F. This can be either six inch by six inch paper or 12 inch by 12 inch paper that is cut down to six by six. Then you will cut the papers using these cutting templates and sort the pieces for each of the 15 card sketches. You'll also need some matching colored card stock for the layers and some card bases. And then you can decorate the cards with whatever stamps, dies, ephemera, or embellishments that you'd like following these sketches. This challenge is not company specific, which means you can use whatever supplies you have in your stash. This challenge is a great way to use up those paper pads and get a set of coordinating cards in the process. If you use a paper pad that has 24 sheets, that means you can make 60 coordinating cards. The first page of the printable shows the cutting guides for the first two sheets of pattern paper. The red and yellow are labeled as papers A and B. All of the measurements are listed for each piece and there are scissors on each template to show which part of the paper needs to be cut first. The third and fourth sheets of pattern paper, which are green and blue, are labeled as papers C and D. And there are circled numbers on each piece, which indicates which card sketch the piece goes with. There's also arrows on each piece to show the direction of how it will be placed on each of the card sketches. The fifth and sixth sheets that are purple and pink are labeled as papers E and F. You'll notice that on some of these papers, not all of the arrows go the same direction. So that means you'll want to use patterns that are non-directional, meaning that it doesn't matter which way you turn the paper for papers A, B, and E. Now, if you have a directional pattern, such as hearts or rainbows, you'll want to use it for papers C, D, and F. Now, here are the card sketches. As mentioned before, there's a total of 15 cards for this challenge. And this page shows the first six. The next sheet shows sketches 7 through 12. And then the next sheet shows sketches 13 through 15, along with instructions on the bottom of the last page with some helpful hints, like using larger mats to cut out smaller mats that will be hidden behind the pattern paper to help save on supplies, and also rotating or flipping the card sketches. Now I'll show you the papers that I have assigned for each of the cutting templates. I'm using the Snow Day paper pad from Pink and Main, which is a part of the December 2022 Crafty Courtyard kit. And these are the six sheets I have assigned to each of the cutting templates. I'm using the plaid pattern for paper A and the snowflake pattern for paper B. And then you can see on the other side, there's snowflakes on one and then dashes on the other. And then for paper C and D, I'm using these two patterns here, the mittens and then the pink with the gray snowflakes. And then on the back sides, there's snowflakes and then a gingham pink pattern on the one. And then for papers E and F, I'm using these two snowflake patterns here on the right. And on the back side, there's more of that gingham pattern. Of course, you don't have to use double-sided paper, but it does make it a little easier to assign the papers because if the patterns on one side don't match what it will be paired with, the other side might coordinate better. But card sketch one shows a piece from paper A paired with a piece from paper B. Sketch two is just a large strip from paper A. 
Sketch 3 also uses a strip from paper A but pulls in a little square banner piece from paper C. Sketches 4 and 5 use only paper B and then sketch 6 uses a large piece from paper C plus two small pieces from papers A and B. Sketch 7 pairs paper C and D with the decorative border between them and then sketch 8 uses papers D and F, these two here, and then sketch 9 pairs paper C and E, and then sketch 10 and 11 both pair D and E together. So these two here, and I'll probably use the, the back side for these, and then for sketch 12, it pairs papers E and F. And then for sketch 13, it uh, pairs papers E and F, but it also brings in another square banner from paper D. And then for sketches 14 and 15, this uses only paper F for those diagonal pieces there. And remember, you don't have to follow the sketches exactly. They're just a starting point to get you going. You can change it up if you need to make it work with the supplies that you have. So now I'll show you the best way for cutting the papers using the templates. But before you get started, you'll want to have something to put the paper pieces in once you cut them up to help keep you organized. I like to use cellophane sleeves that are numbered, but envelopes would also work or even pre-cut card bases. You'll want to look for the scissors on the cutting template, and this indicates where you cut first. So we'll start with paper A, and you see the scissors here at the top. So that's where you're going to want to make your first cut. If you look at the arrows on this cutting guide, you'll see that all but one are facing to the left. So the piece for card sketch two faces upward, which means that's how it's going to face on the card sketch as it's shown on the printable. But remember, you can flip the sketch to make it a vertical or portrait card if you have a lot of directional patterns that you want to use up. My pattern is this plaid and it's non-directional, so it doesn't matter which way I turn it to make my cuts. But the first cut will be at five inches and then you'll want to turn the little strip and cut off that small piece at the bottom at five and a half inches. And these two pieces are for card sketches three and six. And then you'll turn the larger piece and cut it at three and three quarter inches. And that's for card one. And then that will leave the other piece measuring two and a quarter inches, which will be for card two. And I'm gonna go ahead and place these pieces in my cellophane sleeves by number so that you can see my process for keeping things organized. But I won't do this for all of the papers to save on time, but you definitely wanna keep track of which pieces go with each card sketch. So now to cut the second sheet of paper, paper B, and I'm gonna locate where the scissors are on my printable, and this is at three and five eighths of an inch. And so my pattern here is uh, also non-directional, it's the snowflake pattern, but um, the easiest way to find three and five eighths is to find three and a half basically, and then just scoot it over by one eighth of an inch. And then once you make this first cut, then you'll want to take this large piece and turn it and basically just cut it in half at three inches. And these pieces are for sketches one and four. And then with this bottom rectangle strip, you'll cut it at five and a half inches. And that piece will be for card sketch five. And then the little one inch strip will eventually be a banner for card six. Now to cut paper C, the scissors indicate to cut this one inch strip off first. So I'm going to measure at five inches and cut, and then I'll take that strip and turn it and cut at five inches, leaving a one inch square, which will be for card three. And this cutting guide is very similar to paper A. We're just basically changing the size of that banner piece. But for the large piece, you'll then cut it at three and three quarter inches, which will be for card six, and the other piece will be for card seven. And now we're gonna cut paper D, and my scissors indicate to cut off a one inch strip off of the bottom. So we'll do that first, 
and then we'll turn that piece to cut at five inches to leave another one inch square for card 13. And then the strip of course will be for card 10 and then you'll take the larger piece and cut the three and three quarter inch piece first. And then you'll wanna measure at one inch to leave the pieces for cards 11 and seven. All right, so now let's cut paper E. So for paper E, your first cut will be at two and a quarter inches. Then you'll turn the piece on the left and cut it again at two and a quarter inches to make a square piece. And this square piece goes with card nine and the other piece will go with card 12. And then you'll wanna turn this other piece here and cut off a one inch strip off of the bottom for card 13. So I'm gonna measure at five inches and then turn this piece again and measure at two and three quarter inches for the pieces that go with cards 10 and 11. And then finally for paper F, your first cut will be at two and a quarter inches, same as paper E. And so once you make that cut at two and a quarter inches, then you're gonna turn this smaller piece and cut it at four and a half inches. And that piece will be for card 12. And then you'll take this small rectangle here and you'll cut it in half at one and one eighths of an inch. And both of these pieces are for card eight. And then for the bottom part, you'll measure at five inches and cut the one inch strip off of the end for card 13. And that will leave a three and three quarter inch by five inch piece. And so now to cut the diagonals, you'll want to take a ruler and measure one and a quarter inches from the top left corner down, and then you'll mark it. Um, I'm using a white gel pen because I couldn't find my pencil, but whatever works. And then on the other side, you'll measure two and a half inches from the top down along the side and once you have both sides marked what you're going to do is place this piece in your cutter and you'll want to line up those two marks in the cut line on your paper trimmer and you'll cut these and these will be for cards 14 and 15. Now all of my papers are cut and all of the pieces are sorted into the numbered cellophane bags and I have my matching colored cardstock ready to cut all of the layers. So I'm just going to go through here and decide which sides of the pattern papers I want to use. But um, this is a printer friendly version of the PDF printable that you see here. And this is available for download by patrons, which are supporters of my Patreon page. This is a membership program where you can receive extra benefits. And I'll talk more about those here in a bit, but all of the layers and extra pieces of cardstock that you'll need for your cards are marked with measurements on the card sketches. You can get creative and use different textures for any of the non pattern paper pieces and strips. You can use embossing folders or stencils for any of the plain panels or add ribbon or fun embellishments or ephemera. You don't have to keep it plain like it's shown on the sketches. Get creative. But use the sketches to cut all of your layers. And one great thing about this particular challenge is that you have some pieces that can be swapped out if you don't like how the patterns pair together. So you'll want to look at the cards with the three and three quarter by five inch panels, which are cards one, six, and eight, to see if you like those patterns together better. Check to see if the other smaller pieces coordinate, and then you can swap those out if you'd like. And then the same goes with the pieces for cards two and seven. 
So you might like the five by two and a quarter inch piece from paper A paired better with paper D rather than paper C. But once you have all of your layers cut, you can decide how you want to decorate your cards. I'll be sharing the cards I made with the Snow Day paper pad from Pink and Main at a later time here on my YouTube channel. So make sure you're a subscriber and turn on those notifications so you don't miss any of my new uploads. But when I was creating challenge number nine, I really wanted to create some masculine cards since I don't have very many of those on hand and there's a lot of guys in my family. But for this first set of cards that I made, I used the Great Outdoors paper pad by Honey Bee Stamps that you see here. And so now I'll show you the finished cards and I'll place the card sketch number in the top right hand corner and I'll also list the main products I used for each of the cards on the screen and I'll link them in the description box below as well. While I show you these cards, I'll explain how to enter the challenge. As mentioned before, you can find the free printable on my website at kendrascardchallenges.com. The printable includes a QR code that you can scan with your camera on your mobile device that will take you directly to the Facebook group called Kendra's Card Challenges. You can also find the link to the Facebook group down in the description box below. You'll have to agree to some group rules before you'll be approved to join, but in this group is where you will upload your photo of all 15 cards into the KCC9 official entry photo album to officially enter the challenge. In the featured posts at the top of the Facebook group, you will find instructions on how to locate and post to these photo albums using both a computer and a mobile device. It's important that you post in the photo album so that I can locate your entry. There are also separate photo albums for each card sketch where you can share a photo of each card individually. Uploading individual card photos isn't a requirement to be entered to win one of the quarterly prizes, but this is how you enter to win one of the monthly sketch prizes. Plus, everyone can see the cards up close a little better. What's great about the individual albums is that you can post the pictures as you finish them throughout the quarter and still be eligible to win the sketch prizes, even if you don't get to finish all 15 cards. You can officially enter the challenge up to three times, but only once per month throughout the quarter. So basically one entry per month. But please feel free to share all of your creations in the Facebook group if you decide to do more. Now, if you're not on Facebook, you can upload your photo using the form that's linked on my website to officially enter the challenge. You can also upload your creations to other social media platforms using the hashtags Kendra's Card Challenge 9 and KCC9 so that others can see your creations and be inspired. Now I'd like to tell you a little more about my membership program over on patreon.com that I mentioned earlier, where patrons can receive additional perks and benefits depending on the tier that you choose, starting at just $5 a month. Patron benefits include a handmade card made by me each month, access to a printer-friendly version of the current challenge PDF file, access to previous card challenges, plus a shout out on all of my challenge videos. As an all access patron, you can get early access to my card challenges and access to monthly bonus printables for just $10. These printables include additional one sheet wonder files, fun fold card making tutorials, digital papers, digital sentiments, and more. Now the bonus printable for January of 2023 is a Valentine themed digital card making kit complete with 10 digital papers, digital ephemera and stamps, and card examples using the card sketches in challenge number nine. As a VIP patron, you get everything already mentioned, plus a card making kit and a live crafty card making session through Zoom each quarter. By becoming a member, you help to keep my quarterly card making challenges free each quarter. And if you're not a member, I hope you'll consider joining. I really love doing these challenges. For more information on how to become a member, please visit patreon.com forward slash Kendra's Card Challenges, and I'll have this link below in the description box. 
Now I'd like to introduce the new design team members for Kendra's Card Challenges for January to June of 2023. I'm super excited to have these talented crafters as part of my team this year. Each member will be sharing cards they created using Challenge 9 on their YouTube channels and other social media sites. I can't wait to see what all they have to share with you this quarter. I'm sure they will have some fabulous ideas and lots of card making inspiration for you. I will have a link to my design team page in the description box where you can learn more about each of the members and find all of their social media links. I hope you'll take the time to check this out and follow each of them on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and or TikTok. They each have their own unique style and I have loved seeing their take on each of the sketches for previous card challenges. Plus, I want to mention there will be a big giveaway video hop on January 2nd of 2023, where each of the 15 new design team members will be sharing the card making process for each of the 15 sketches in this challenge. Plus, you'll have a chance to win a huge box of card making supplies. I hope you'll hop along with us to get some wonderful ideas and tips for challenge nine and have a chance to win the goodie box. Now let's talk about the amazing prizes you can win for entering Kendra's card challenge number nine. We have 17 company prize sponsors this quarter with prizes totaling more than $800. That's double the amount we had last quarter, which is totally awesome. The sponsors for this challenge are Artful Angel, Catherine Pooler Designs, Colorado Craft Company, Gina K Designs, Cat Scrappiness, Lawn Fawn, My Favorite Things Stamps, Not Too Shabby Shop, Pear Blossom Press, Pink and Main, Prickly Pear Stamps and Dyes, Scrappy Tails Crafts, Sweet November Stamps, This Calls for Confetti, TLC Designs, Whimsy Stamps, and Your Next Stamp. You can see the full list of prizes on my website. I'd like to take a moment to thank all of the Kendra's Card Challenges patrons that are shown here. I really appreciate your generosity and support. It means the world to me. I hope you enjoy your handmade cards each month and the other benefits that you receive as a patron. Now for anyone interested in joining this challenge, remember you have until March 31st of 2023 to create your cards and get them posted to the Kendra's Card Challenges Facebook group or uploaded to the form if you're not on Facebook. If you think you might give this challenge a try, please leave me a comment down below. I'd also love it if you'd give this video a thumbs up and share this challenge with any of your crafty friends who you, you think might enjoy it. If you're a subscriber to my YouTube channel already, thank you for continuing to support my channel. If you're not, I hope you will consider subscribing. I'll be sharing some different types of card making videos on my channel this year, in addition to cards that are made with my challenges. There will be a variety of techniques shared and different types of products used so you can see other ways to make handmade cards and hopefully be inspired to get creative. I hope that you'll join us on challenge number nine and share your creations on social media, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, or YouTube. Don't forget to check out the KCC9 giveaway hop that starts on January 2nd and ends on January 9th. You'll have a chance to win a big box of card making supplies, so don't miss out. I really appreciate you watching this video. I can't wait to see what all you create, and I hope to see you again soon. Have a fabulous day.